So we are going to write our point slope form formula up at the top. Y minus Y1 equals M. Messing up my color coding, guys. Equals M times X minus x1. That is your point slope formula. Do we really ever leave our equations in point slope formula? No, we don't like leaving it in point slope formula. Okay. However, today we are going to look at, I'm going to give it to you in point slope formula. We're going to identify the point and we're going to identify the slope. Then we're going to graph it. Okay. So, Looking here, what is my slope? Where do we find the slope? In front of the parentheses, right? What's my coefficient of the parentheses? Negative two-thirds. So my m is negative two-thirds. That is your slope. Okay. Then my ordered pair of my point, the number with x, is the x value of the ordered pair. But remember, it's minus x1. So we have to do the opposite. I see a negative 3, which means it's a positive 3. I see a negative 6, which means it's a positive 6. Good with that. Okay, now we're going to graph it. I have a point and I have a slope. That's enough to graph. You always are going to start with your point. The slope doesn't help you if you don't know where you're beginning. Okay, if I tell you directions, like to drive in a car, if I tell you directions, the directions mean nothing if you, I don't know where you're starting. Okay, so we have to start at a location, a point. So we're going to plot 3, 6. So plot your point. Do you have your notes? Starting. So plot your point three six. Now I'm gonna go up because I always go up when I do slope. If it's a negative or negative numbers to the right or left. So I'm gonna go up two left three. What's opposite of up to the left? Down two right three. And then draw your line with what at the ends? arrows. Guys, do we now see where it hits the y-axis? Do we see a point where it hits the y-axis, guys? Yeah, right there. What's that b value? I think it's 8. So b is 8. So now that I have an m and a b, can I write this in y equals mx plus b form? Yeah, so y equals negative two-thirds x plus 8. This would be my equation in slope-intercept form. Would I get that same thing if I solved this for y? And that's what we did yesterday, right? Distribute your slope and move the constant away from the y. Okay. Guys, I know we haven't done math in like six days. It's been a while. Is this a good refresher though? Is it kind of starting to come back to us? Point slope form? Okay. Let's look at the next one. What's my M? Or what's my slope? Three. Very good. My point, I see negative four with the X, so that makes it a positive four. What's the number with y? 3, which makes it a negative 3. It's the opposite of what I see because there's a minus in the formula in front of the y. So we are going to always start with our point. For graphing purposes, I always want my slope as a fraction. So I'm going to put my 3 over what? 
All whole numbers have a denominator of what? So I'm going to put over 1. So I'm going to rise 3, and if it's positive, which way am I going to go? Right 1. Are we seeing how this is super repetitive to what we did last unit? Yes, no. What's opposite of up to the right, guys? Down to the left, so down 3, left 1. This one, can I see where it hits the y-axis? Guys, do I see on this graph where this line hits the y-axis? Yes? It hits the x-axis, but does anyone see a point where the y-axis and the line cross? No. Okay. And we're not trying to write it in slope-intercept form. I was just showing y'all that now that I see the y-intercept, I can. But... So it's okay that we don't see our y-intercept. We don't need to put it in slope-intercept form. Okay, with that? Okay. Sometimes they might look slightly different. This one doesn't have parentheses on the right, but that's okay. What is attached to my x? So that's your what? Your slope. Is there a number in the parentheses with x? No, so what's that x value of your point? Zero. What's the number with y? But it's opposite, so it's negative 6. Guys, what kind of point is this? If x is 0, this is a y-intercept. Okay, remember when x is 0, this is your y-intercept. Plot the point. 0, negative 6. I'm going to move up 9 since it's positive. Which way do I go? Right 5. And draw your line. Guys, could I be putting these in the calculator to check? Do my equations say y equals? Does this say y equals? No, it says y plus 6 equals. So can I put this in the calculator to check? No, because to put it in the calculator, it has to say y equals. Okay? Okay, let's look at the next one. What is my slope, Ashna? Looking at number 4, what's my slope? Negative 3, great job. What is the x value of my point, Olivia? Negative 3, very good. The number with x, and then take the opposite of it. What is the y value of my point, Bailey? So in math, what represents nothing? What number? Zero, very good. There's no number over here being added or subtracted. Oh, y'all can't see. There's no number over there being added or subtracted with the y. What kind of point is this? It's an x-intercept because y is zero. Great job. So I'm going to plot my point. I'm going to put my slope over one. So I'm going to go up. 3, since it's a negative, which way do I go? Left. So up 3, left 1. What's opposite of up to the left? Down to the right. And there we go. Do I see my y-intercept this time? Do I see where my line crosses the y-axis? Yes, right here. What's that b value then? Uh, what? Uh, what? Negative, nine. negative 9. So b is negative 9. So I could write y equals negative 3x minus 9. And that is your equation in what form? Slope-intercept. Very good. 
Okay, we're going to do one more together, then y'all are going to do the last one of these on your own. Alex, what is my slope here? So the negative 5 is with the y. That's going to help me find the y value of the point. So your slope is a coefficient. Do I have an x? So x's coefficient is what? 1. So my slope is 1. This is tricky. Okay, what is the x value, Dominic, of my point? So remember, I always take the opposite because the formula is x minus x1. Positive 2. Very good. And then what is the y value of my ordered pair, Heather? Positive 5. Great job. So we take the opposite of what we see. Plot your point. And then go... How am I going to move, Lexi? Great job. Up one, right one. And then the opposite of that is down one, left one. And draw your line. Do I see where it hits the y-axis, Heidi? At 3, so b is 3. So what would my equation be, Dylan, day? Uh, one what? Oh, one and do you have to have the 1 then? Uh, no. no, so just y equals x plus 3. There you go. Okay, I want to all do a number six on your own. We're doing number six on your own. Okay, guys, let's look at number six. What is my slope, Ben? Six over five. Dylan, what is my ordered pair? Negative five. Negative five. Because remember, we always take the opposite when we're looking at point slope, when we're finding our ordered pair, you always look at the opposite value. So, negative 5, negative 5, and then my slope is up 6, right 5. And draw your line. I was wrong, Lexi. You are going to need to fix your graph. Where does this hit the y-axis, guys? At what? The y-axis? Guys, where does this line cross the y-axis? At 1. So what's my b value? 1. So b is 1. So y equals, what's my m? Very good. x plus, what's b? 1. Very good. y equals mx plus b. Good? Okay, we are now going to writing the equation given two points. Can you use point slope form if you only have two points? In order to use point slope form, you have to have your, what's the second word? Point slope. So you have to have the slope. If I just give you two ordered pairs, are either of those your slope? No, so you cannot go straight to point slope formula if you are given two points. However, from last unit, do we know how to find the slope given two points? Yes, that's why we did this last unit. If I give you two ordered pairs, if I give you two points, you have to first find the slope using slope formula. So we're going to do m equals y2 minus 
y1 over x2 minus x1. So we first are finding the slope. Okay, that's how you find your slope. Guys, to write an equation of your line, you have to have slope. So if I do not give you a slope, you have to figure out some way to calculate the slope. Okay? Then, if you have two points, you only need one, and now I have a slope, can I then use my point-slope formula? If I calculate the slope, do I now have the slope? If I give you two points, do I have one point? Yes, yeah, so we can go to our point-slope formula, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Guys, I will tell you, these are a long process. Okay, this is a long process. Okay, so let's make sure we're paying attention. Also, is it a bad idea to use your calculator to check yourself? No, there's so many steps in these. It's not hard, but there's a lot of steps where we can make one silly mistake of adding or subtracting wrong or an incorrect sign that makes the whole thing wrong. So we want to use our calculator to help us, okay? So, I have two ordered pairs. I first need to find my slope. So I'm going to label my ordered pairs x1, y1. I would write relatively small to give yourself room. x1, y1. And then x2, y2. So I have two points. I have to find my slope. So we are going to use our slope formula. So m equals, what's y2? Negative 1 minus, what's y1? Over, what's x2? Minus x1, negative 3. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my double signs. What happens with a minus negative? It becomes a plus. Very good. We're all paying attention, guys. Come on. So I get m equals, what's negative 1 minus 7? Negative 8. Over, what's 1 plus 3? 4. So m equals, what's negative 8 over 4? Negative 2. So I now have my m. Now that I have my m, my slope, can I use point-slope formula? Now remember, last class I taught you a little trick. If one of the points is the y-intercept, can I go straight to slope-intercept form? Are either of these, though, my y-intercept? No, why not? Neither of them have an x value of 0. Okay, so I have to use point slope formula. Does it matter which one I use as, point, as my point to use point slope formula? No, but I already have this one labeled x1, y1, so I'm just going to use the first point that I already have labeled x1, y1. Okay? So now we're going to use our point slope formula. So I have y minus, what's y1? What's y1? 7 equals, what did we just calculate, m to b, times x minus, what's x1? Negative 3. I'm going to change my double negatives to a positive. Okay, draw your line through the equals. On the left side, there's nothing to do, so I'm going to drop down my y minus 7. What do I do on the right side? Distribute. Very good. What's negative 2 times x? And what's negative 2 times 3? Negative 6. 
I want y by itself. So circle y. What am I going to do to get y by itself? Add 7. So I get y equals. What do I get? Morgan, what do I get? Y equals what? What's this side? Say it again. And then what else? Negative 6 plus 7. Plus 1. Is that now in the form y equals mx plus b? If it says y equals, guys, can we check this on our calculator? Yes. Was that a lot of work? Did we substitute a ton of different spaces? Did we have to substitute a lot? We substituted here, 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 and here. Is that a lot? Yes, that's a lot of places we could make a silly mistake. So let's all go to our calculator. We are all doing this. Let's all go to y equals on our calculator. We're all on y equals on our calculator. I'm going to type in negative 2x plus 1. I'm typing in my equation, y equals negative 2x plus 1. What pulls up the values? Because I want to check if what I was given matches the equation I got. So what am I going to do? Pull up the table. Very good. Second graph. So let's go. Negative 3, 7. Does that match? And then 1, negative 1. Does that match? Yep. My answer is correct. Guys, last class we checked every single one on the calculator. Can we check these on the calculator? Did I just check this on the calculator? Yes. Is it a good idea to check? Yes. Okay. Your quiz over this is next Tuesday. Okay, so two classes from now. Can you check them on the calculator? Okay, let's do the next one. Label your ordered pairs. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And then we get M equals Y2, which is what? Negative 4 minus Y1. over x2 minus x1 okay let's get rid of our double sign minus negative becomes plus 7 minus negative becomes plus 6 so I get m equals what's negative 4 over 7 what's 3 plus 6 can that simplify? Please don't tell me three. It's what? One third. Very good. So I now have my slope. I have a point and I have a slope. So let's look. Are either of these my y-intercept? No. So I have to use point-slope formula. Okay? Because neither are my y-intercept. So we're going to do y minus y1. What's y1? equals m. What's m? One third. Very good. Times x minus. What's x1? Negative six. Very good. Draw our line through the equals and let's get rid of our double signs. What do I do with a minus negative seven? Plus 7. What do I do with a minus negative 6? 
plus six. Is there anything to do on the left side? Can I actually do y plus seven? No, so just drop it down. What do I get on the right side, Michaela? Sorry, left side, I think I said. I mean right side. One third times x. Plus what? Very good. One third times six is two. Okay, circle your y. What am I gonna do next, Syrah? Get y by itself. So what's the opposite of plus? So I'm going to minus seven. So then we get y equals one third x. And then what does that become, Yusra? Negative five, very good. Are we now in the form y equals mx plus b? What should we do next, Leo? What should we do next? Check it on our? Check it on the calculator. Very good. So let's all go to our calculator. Let's all do this. This is how we remember how to use the calculator and become masters at the calculator. So let's all go to our calculator, please. We did this, Morgan? Calculator? Go to y equals. Clear it out. Alpha y equals enter. Put in your one-third x minus 5. Then what pulls up my values? Second graph. And I want to see if the point negative 6, negative 7, that's on the table. And then I want to make sure the point 3, negative 4. What if one of them was on the table but not the second one? Then it's not correct. You're wrong. Okay. Both points must be on the table for it to be a correct answer, which this one was, so we did a great job. How are you feeling about these guys? They're super procedural, right? Okay, the procedure is somewhat long, like we have to use two different formulas, but you do the same thing every time. If I give you two points, use point slope or sorry, use your slope formula to find the slope, then use point slope formula, solve for y. Okay? We're going to do one more together, then y'all are going to do one on your own. Label your point. x1, y1. x2, y2. And we're going to use our slope formula. M equals, what's y2? Negative 6. Very good. Minus y1. Negative 1. Negative 1. Very good. Over. What's x2? Minus x1. So we're going to get m equals, get rid of your double signs, minus a negative 1 just becomes plus 1. So what's negative 6 plus 1? Negative then 4 minus 2 is 2. Very good. Does negative 5 have simplify? No. So we're done finding our slope. Now we're going to use our point slope formula. y minus y1. equals m times x minus x1. Draw your line through the equals, get rid of your double signs and make it a big plus. Is there anything I can do on the left side, Manet? So on the left, I'm just dropping it down. On the right, I'm going to distribute. Very good. So what's negative 5 halves times x? Very good. When you have a number times a variable, you just glue them together. The number always goes in front. The 
coefficient goes in front. What's negative 5 halves times negative 2? Monet? And it's a positive, so it is a plus 5. Very good. Circle your y. What am I going to do to get y by itself? Miles. Um, minus, one. minus 1. Very good. So then what do I get as my y equals, Miles? And then we are going to check ourselves. Let's all do this on our calculator. Go to y equals. And we're going to type in our negative alpha y equals enter 5 over 2 x plus 4. Let's all type it in our calculator. And then we're going to go to second graph to pull up the table. 2, negative 1, and 4, negative 6. So both of my points are on the table, meaning we got the right answer. Yay. Okay, you're going to do number 3 on your own, guys. 3 on your own. Okay, guys, let's look at number 4. Label your ordered pairs. X1, Y1, X2, y2 and then we're going to do our slope formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so then we get m equals what's 5 minus 6 Negative 1 over 2 minus 1. 1. So I get m equals what? Negative 1. Okay, so then we're going to do y minus y1, which is 6, equals m, which is negative 1, times x minus x1, which is 1. Nothing to do on the left-hand side, so drop down your y minus 6. On the right-hand side, we're distributing. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. We want y by itself, so we're going to add 6. So we get y equals. When I drop down my negative 1x, would you really put a coefficient of 1? No, so I'm just going to write it as negative x plus 7. Would I take points off if you put negative 1x? Would I take points off if you put negative 1 over 1? No, because all those are correct answers, but this is the way you're actually going to see it written. You don't need a coefficient of 1, okay, or negative 1. Good? Okay, we're going to do number 5 together. I would not go ahead because I'm going to show you a trick, okay? Some of us might have already remembered this from last class. We have two points. We do not have the slope. We have to use slope formula. So label it x1, y1, x2, y2. So we're going to use our slope formula. m equals y2, which is negative 5, minus y1, which is 1 over x2, which is 0, minus x1, which is negative 8. Good with that? Okay, get rid of your double signs. Make it a big plus. So what's negative 5 minus 1? Negative 6 over 8. When the numbers are both the same sign, you add them together. So 1 plus 5 is 6. They're negative, so it's a negative 6. 0 plus 8 is 8. 
Does negative 6 over 8 simplify? Yes. So I get m equals what? Negative 3 fourths. Okay. What do I notice, guys? Look at your two points. Is there anything special about either of those points? That is my y-intercept. Why do I know it's my y-intercept? Because x equals 0. So do I have to do point slope form if I have my slope and my y-intercept? No. What's my b value then? What's the b value, guys? Negative 5. So I have my m and my b. So I can go straight to y equals mx plus b. y equals mx plus b. Now, would you get the same answer if you did use point slope formula and then solved it for y? Yeah, if you look on my like pre-done notes, I did, I did use point slope formula and solve for y. And I still got negative 3 fourths x minus 5. Negative 3 fourths x minus 5. Same thing. Good? How many of us don't love this process and think it's kind of long? Okay. How many of us like it because it's the same thing every time and we like doing math? I like it. Okay, I'm going to show you now a different way that we can do this, okay? Some of us might like this way. Some of us might like the way I'm about to show you, which is doing what? What do we see here? Graphing, okay? So, if I am given two points, can I plot those points after her? Can I plot those points on the graph? If I'm given two ordered pairs, guys, can I plot those points? Do you have to be good at plotting points to use this method? Yes, because if you mess up plotting your points, you're going to get the wrong answer. Okay, so let's plot our two points. Negative 4, negative 2. And then 4, 0. You could draw your line. I wouldn't really draw my line. Okay? And I'm going to show you why. So I have my two points. I now need to find my what between the two points? Your y-intercept. But first I'm going to find my slope. So from this point to this point, I go up, one, two. So I go up, two. Then I go... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 to the right. So that's plus 8. So my m is 2 over 8, which is what? 1 fourth. Okay, so I'm halfway there. I have my m. I now need to find my b. Okay, you could draw a line and kind of guesstimate where it hits, but if you're not using a straight edge, if this is not drawn perfectly, you're going to maybe mess up where your B is. Okay, so I'm going to use my slope to try to find my B or my Y-intercept. Okay, so if I go up 1, right 4, because that's my slope. So I'm going to start with this point, and I'm going to go up 1, and then right 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, Am I now on my y-axis? Yes. What's that y-intercept then? Negative 1. Now, guys, will this method work if your b is a fraction? No. If your b is not a whole number, you cannot use the plot two points and graph it. Okay? If your b is a whole number, can you use this method? Yes. Draw your line. Arrows at the end, make sure your line goes all the way through the graph. So now I have my m and my b. Can I write my equation in slope-intercept form? Yep. 
y equals m x plus b, but b is negative, so minus 1. Just like before, can I graph this on my calculator, pull up the table to make sure these two points are on it? Let's do that. Let's all go to y equals. And I'm going to type in alpha y equals enter 1 fourth x minus 1. I could see if the line looks like that, but that doesn't really matter. I'm really checking the points. I want to make sure these two ordered pairs are on my table. Second graph. Negative 4, negative 2, and 4, 0. They both are, meaning we did this correctly. Now, how do we feel about doing it this way? Do we like this more, less? Okay. Guys, it's going to be personal preference. On your test, on your quiz, you will be given a graph. If it does not say graph this, do you have to graph it? No, the graph is there to help you if you so choose to use this method. If you want to use the first method I just taught you, you do not have to graph it at all. Okay, you don't have to use the graph. You could just do the algebra. Okay, you could just work it out. Good. I do want us to practice a couple more doing it this way just because we might not like it after doing just one, but we might like it after doing a couple. Okay, so let's do the next one. Plot your point, three, four. Plot your point, zero, five. Oh, uh, what do we notice about that point zero five, guys? That's your y-intercept. So what's b? B is five. So that one's kind of easy. But now we do need to find our slope. So again, slope is rise over run. I go up one, and then left three, which is a negative. So my M is positive 1 over negative 3. Well, what is 1 over negative 3? Regina, wait a minute. Okay, I told Leo he could go next. Sorry. What's 1 over negative 3, guys? Negative 1 third. So do I now have my M and my B? So let's write y equals m x plus b. And you don't really have to, but it's good just to practice. Let's draw our line. Arrows at the end. What should we do now? What should we do now, guys? Graph it on our calculator and pull up the table. So let's all do this. Graph it on your calculator and pull up the table. So negative 1 third x plus 5. Pull up the table. 3, 4, 0, 5. Good. Okay, we're going to do one more together. Let's look at number three. Plot your point. One, four. And six, negative one. So we need to count our rise over run, okay, to find our slope. One, two, three, four, five. I went up five. One, two, three, four, five. I went left five. So my M is positive five over 
negative 5, which is what? Negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to go up 1, left 1 to find more points. Up 1, left 1. Oh, when I did that, what do I notice? Did I find my y-intercept? I went up 1, left 1 am I now on the y-axis, guys. Yes, yeah, so what's my y-intercept? What's my b-value? Five. Draw your line with arrows at the end. And let's write our equation. We have our m and our b. y equals, would I put negative 1x? I would just put negative x. I'm okay if you put negative 1x and then plus b. Now let's get our calculator and check. Negative x plus 5. Go to your table and I have 1, 4, 6, negative 1. They match. Okay, I want you all to try two more. I don't care which two you choose. I don't care which method you use. So between 4, 5, 6, you must do two of them, either using the graphing or using find the slope, then use point slope formula like we did on the front. Okay, so it does not matter to me. You need to do two of the next three, okay, on your own. And we'll, I'll put the answer key up. So these are the answers to those three. I saw lots of good things. You should know if you got them right or not because you just put it in your calculator and pull up the table. Okay? Do we have any questions over any of these three? Don't put up. We're not done. Like I said, we're in here a long time today. So we're doing one more page. The page is going to be quick, but we're doing one more page. Do you have any questions over those? How'd we do? Thumbs, good. I got both right that I told you to do. I got one right. I didn't even do it. We good? Okay, next page. Oh, no. Yep, we'll do this. Okay. This one's kind of in a bad spot, guys. Sorry. So we have now learned three different types of equations of our lines. We've learned slope-intercept form. What is slope-intercept form? Y equals MX plus B. Okay. What's point-slope form? Y minus equals M times X minus X1. Good. And then we have standard form. Standard form, we haven't talked a lot about this unit. We talked about last unit because we don't really like standard form. Okay? But standard form, does anyone remember standard form? It's AX plus BY equals C. The X and the Y are both on the left and the constant on the right. Good? Okay, so up here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 equations. There's 9 boxes. So you are going to look at the equation and identify, is that slope-intercept form? Is that point-slope form? Or is that standard form? So I'm going to do one of each with you, then you are going to work with a partner to finish. Okay, so this first one, what form is this in? Slope intercept, y equals mx plus b. Okay, so 
y equals mx plus b. And I'm going to cross this one out. We already put it somewhere. Now, why do we like slope-intercept form? You can find the slope and the y-intercept. So what's my slope? One ninth. And what's my y-intercept? And I'm going to write it as zero negative eight. Good? Okay, next one. What form is this in? Standard form. Okay, so this is four x plus, or uh, not plus, sorry. Four x minus seven y equals twenty-eight. Okay, so if you remember back from last unit, we use standard form to find our intercepts. Okay, we're going to cover up the y, and I have 4x equals 28. To find your x-intercept, you cover up the y. I don't need the y. Divide both sides by 4, and we get x is 7. So what's my x-intercept? 7, 0. Very good. Then to find my y-intercept, you don't need the Find the y-intercept, you don't need the x. So I'm going to cover up the x, and what am I left with? Negative 7y equals 28. Divide both sides by negative 7, and we get y equals negative 4. So that's 0, negative 4. I'm going to cross this one out. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go to this next one. I want to find one that's a point slope. Tell me one that's a point slope. Great job. And I'm going to cross that one out. Okay. So, what is point slope good for? It's in the name for a point and a slope. So, let's start with the easy one. What's my slope? Six. Six. Y'all worrying me. We've been doing this for like an hour, 15 minutes today. We can't find our slope in point slope form? We can. Okay, my slope six. What's my point? One, three, because remember, they're minuses in the formula, so I take the opposites of the numbers I see. I see a minus one, so it's a positive one. I see a negative three, so it's a positive three. Okay? So you have six more that you need to do with a partner. Once you are done, come show it to me. We're going to check it, and then you can start your homework. Okay? Guys, we're still in here for 35 minutes, so you have plenty of time, okay? One, two, three, go. You can work with a partner. Okay. 